All right. So, um, today, briefly, the long-awaited, often requested video on how I sharpen a head knife. Um, these things are uh, these things are kind of the devil. There is no better tool to use for saddlery and uh, no worse tool to try and sharpen. So I'm gonna quickly cover um, what I do to make this work. Um, supplies necessary, stones. Um, if your knife is already pretty dull, you're gonna need several grits. Um, if it's pretty sharp, you're not. I use hard Arkansas stones. Uh, well, I use hard stones to finish. So this blade I only use really for one thing. So it never gets very dull. Um, so I use a hard stone on it. If you do less maintenance than I do, you're probably going to need a couple different grits, right? So in the shop, I generally keep like a coarse crystal on stone for, you know, reprofiling or whatever. And then I keep a soft Arkansas and a hard Arkansas. These are made by Dan's. Uh, Dan's Whetstone Company, and uh, they're a natural naviculite stone. Um, the hard stone is somewhere, you know, 800,000 grit, and um, it's really all you need. So you're going to need that. You're going to need some good quality um, mineral oil. Let me see if I've got any. I might have to go to the other cabinet. <clears throat> you don't have to use mineral oil. You can use, um, you know, kind of whatever. Uh, you know, lubricant you want, but I use Lily White. It's what all my sewing machines take. So, um, you know, Lily White stitching oil um, is where I'm going to go with this, right? And we're just going to get enough on here. The purpose of this is to float the abraded particles away from the sharpening um, surface, right? So we want to we want to give those little pieces of metal we're getting rid of somewhere to go. And it doesn't take very much. <clears throat> Other supplies we'll need. You're probably going to need a strop. Um, it's just a piece of oak with leather cemented to both sides. One side is uh, loaded with uh, black compound and the other one is uh, green oxide. Black is a little bit more aggressive. Um, you know, you find what works best. Give you a quick diagram to show you what we're doing. So. We've got kind of the blade edge in profile, looks like this, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're going to apply the blade to a stone in a way that we roll a burr off the edge. And what that means, this is obviously greatly exaggerated, but you're gonna roll a little hangnail on one side. And so you're gonna go until you've got that uniformly around, then you're gonna flip it and you're gonna go till you get it uniformly around the other direction, um, and you're gonna repeat this a couple of times, right? And what that's doing is bringing the blade to an apex. Um, once we've kind of brought that to an apex, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the strop to actually cut that wire burr off. And the result is gonna be a blade we can actually use for something. So, um, this is something that takes a lot of feel, right? And you get used to it over time you know, what it feels like. So initially, uh, this part's not gonna be very good. You're gonna have a, you're gonna struggle to maintain kind of where your edge is at. <clears throat> and all I can say is, is keep going. Uh, it gets better, right? And you can use a Sharpie to help yourself. You can actually Sharpie the edge of your blade and then um, inspect it as you go to make sure that make sure that you're actually sharpening the part of the blade that you think you're sharpening, right? A couple of different techniques. You can, you can do this business, right? You can, right? Um, I'm one of the fans of the, the circle method. And you need enough pressure to abrade the material, but you don't need to go crazy. If you go crazy, you'll actually convex your edge, right? So in this case, I'm just making these tiny little circles, working my way around, trying to keep the angle as consistent as possible. 
Um, I don't know if you can see where the oil is on my blade, but it is a fairly consistent distance all the way around. And that's what we want, okay? We're trying to form that little burr. And then we're gonna take that burr uh, to the other side. Gonna repeat this a couple of times and then we'll be done. Now, if your knife is not sharp enough to start with say a 600 grit stone, 800 grit stone, and you're not confident in your sharpening abilities, I would strongly recommend sending it off to a professional sharpener and having them put a geometrically correct edge on this to start with. Because if you start with a good edge, it's a lot easier to maintain. Um, for what it's worth, the edges on these knives from the factory, especially modern ones, unless you're buying a custom knife, are insufficient. They are not sharp enough to do anything with. You know, I got a modern main made Osborne, um, oh hell, it was five or maybe even 10 years ago, and uh, you couldn't have traded that thing for two cigarettes in prison. I mean, it's terrible. So if that is the case, send it off, get it reprofiled, then work on it. So you can see that oil is building up. It's kind of getting caught, right? <clears throat> and what's holding that oil in place along that edge is that burr that I was talking about. It gives that fluid somewhere to kind of hang. And if we wipe this off and feel, you'll be able to feel what feels like a little wire edge. And when you've got the wire edge all the way around, you flip it. And as the edge gets thinner, the wire edge is gonna move faster, right? So the first couple of times, it's gonna take a little while to get you that wire edge because the edge is still pretty thick, right? So <clears throat> initially, you've got something that kinda looks like this, right? As it progresses to this, the distal end gets thinner. And because it gets thinner, it more quickly rolls um, to the other side, right? And your goal with this is to be as flat as possible. The flatter the edge is, the better it's going to perform, especially in thick material. You know, you don't want a great big battle axe, hunting knife, Conan the Barbarian sort of Aquilonia type of edge on this thing, right? You want a very thin edge. The thinner it is, the less resistance you will have. And if your steel is good quality and appropriately heat treated, you're not gonna have any issues uh, with edge stability. So, you know, don't worry about that. I'm sure there's some knife guy in the crowd right now that's judging me harshly. You know, you're welcome to it. I'm a leather guy, not a knife guy. And to me, these are tools and tools have to work. So that is the angle from which I'm approaching this, right? There's guys that'll tell you you gotta get on here and use water stones and go to 20,000 grit, whatever. Well, look, leather is a, a, an abrasive material by nature. So you can take this to 10,000 grit if you want, but it's gonna be back down to 2,000 grit after the first cut and maybe 1,000 grit after the second cut. And all that extra time you spent could have been better spent somewhere else. Um, for my less delicate knives, my modern made knives, my everyday using knives, the ones that I just, you know, beat up on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I have a two by 72 slack belt grinder and I do all of my quick sharpening on that. Between the grinder and the buffer, you can get a, just a hideously sharp edge in, you know, two minutes. And uh, two minutes is vastly superior to spending, you know, 15, 20 minutes, whatever, you know, doing this. And I mean, I have to sharpen several times a week, sometimes several times a day, depending on what I'm working on. That's not due to the inadequacy of the tools that I'm using. That's simply the nature of the job. So I can't afford to throw away that kind of time. 
I can't afford to throw away that kind of time messing with that stuff. All right. <clears throat> now, when you strop, you're doing the same thing, right? When you're stropping a blade, you are manipulating that burr, but this time, we're trying to kind of cut it off, polish it off, you know, because that burr will break, and you want it to give you a nice, sharp edge. How many leather knives do I have? Um, let's see. On my bench right now, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22 knives, not counting exactos and not counting head knives that I don't use regularly. All right, we'll see how sharp this is. piece of scrap in here. <clears throat> I mean, that'll work, right? So, sorry, <clears throat> but I mean, that's a, what, a two inch wide scythe? Um, but I mean, you know, that's all there is to sharpening in a nutshell, right? It is developing that final edge geometry and then you balance the burr back and forth until, uh, you know, until you've got the edge as thin as you need it to be and then you use your strop and cut it off. Um, it takes muscle memory, but it's not super tough. And, um, you know, if you're gonna do something like on a straight blade, this is like a $5 knife made for the shoe industry, you know. Um, <clears throat> it's ugly, but it works really well, and if I run it into a nail or something, I don't feel bad about it. You know, I don't use these, you know, I don't use these Instagram heirloom knives for everything that I do. Um, right? Um, because you don't, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, again, it's, it's ultimately a tool and if it does its job really well, um, you know, it doesn't really matter if it was $5 or 500, right? Do I prefer a vintage head knife? Generally speaking, vintage knives are better than all, I say all new made knives and there are some excellent custom there are some um, excellent, excellent uh, custom makers. But as far as commercially produced knives, you need to understand something about the industry. See, when most of these really good knives were made, you know, everything that, everything was done via horse, right? All your freight was moved by horse. People were transporting things by horse. People were transporting themselves by horse, etc. And because everything moved by horse, um, you know, imagine every tire shop, Meineke, you know, uh, Firestone, whatever. Every auto shop was instead like harness repair, saddle repair, maintenance, those type of shops. And so these head knives were purpose built for full time professional builders and maintainers of this stuff. And so, you know, the standard was much higher for quality. You know, these things had to work all day, every day, and they were built that way. Um, and that's why they're so much better than the modern knives. That being said, like, you know, Ibex, um, I designed a head knife and Ibex produced it, and it is wildly good. We're still in the prototyping phase, getting it kind of worked out. Bob Dozier makes a really nice head knife. Terry Nipshield makes a really nice head knife. Um, 
you know, but your options are pretty thin. So, you know, you either have to spend $275 on a modern made custom knife um, or find a vintage one and have it reprofiled. So <clears throat> as you can see with the straight blade knife, I'm not doing anything different than before, right? I am doing my little bitty circles here. I'm rolling a burr to one side of the blade. I'm rolling the burr back to the other side of the blade. Um, then I strop the blade and see where I'm at. And uh, if it's sharp enough, you know, I roll on. And if it's not sharp enough, um, you know, I do a little bit more work. Now, this knife is a little bit unique in that I never stone this one, right? This one almost always ends up on the belt grinder because this is just a, this is just a, I mean, this is a workhorse, right? Part knife, part screwdriver, all business. <clears throat> but, you know, it's been excellent. I don't know. It's not quite paper shaven sharp, <clears throat> but you know, that's not always necessary either. Let's grab a piece of leather and see what it does. <clears throat> so there you go. Right? And that was maybe a couple minutes on a stone. Um, so that's for demonstration purposes. Now, um, if I was going to do this on a slack belt, I've got this slack belt grinder, you know, standing over there. And what I'll do is I will take a slack belt at 1200 grit. And um, in the slack portion of the belt, I'm going to apply the edge and I'm going to do the same thing, right? I'm going to run that edge and roll a burr toward me, flip it, roll the burr the other way. I'll do this two to four times. Once I'm confident that I've got that edge balanced, um, I will uh, kick on the buffer with either green oxide compound or uh, white diamond compound or, you know, even like a black cutting compound if I need something a little bit more abrasive. I'll hit it on the buffer two ways and I'm off, right? So I can get that blade just, I can get that blade just as sharp as I want it to be in two minutes, right? So that's essential. But anyway, so there you have it. That is the, that is the, the basic tutorial on head knife sharpening. Um, the principles remain the same regardless of how you engage it. Um, and it takes a lot of muscle memory, so just keep that in mind. Hopefully this is useful to you guys. Um, now, um, you know, now I've got to, uh, actually get to work. I've got a candle binding to do today. I've got some trimming to do. I've got a, I've got an edge iron heating up to wax a belt. And, uh, you know, and there you go. So... Use an eight inch flap wheel on a two horsepower with an eight inch felt wheel. Yeah, I mean, you know, the only disadvantage to using stuff like that is that, you know, you wear out your blades quicker. But if you're not dealing with, you know, these super nice vintage knives or whatever, you know, burn them up, use them, and, uh, you know, buy another one, right? These are, these are tools, these are consumable. So, you know, people don't like to hear it, but knives don't last forever. So uh, a good example of this is this nip shield of mine. This blade started as a three and three quarter or maybe a four inch blade. And I mean, you know, look at it now. So they don't last forever. The good news is it starts as a pattern knife and ends up as a bench knife. So there you have it. Um, anyway. One more quick plug for Dan's Arkansas or Dan's Whetstone Company. Dan's Whetstone makes really nice bench stones. Um, I have their soft and hard Arkansas. You won't go wrong with either. Just know that, you know, uh, the soft is a lower grit, um, and then uh, you know the hard's a little bit higher grit. So depending on what you need to maintain, how often you use it, one's going to be better than the other for you. Um, you know, invest in your tools and, and make the most of your time and. Uh, 
Yeah, that's all there is to it. So hopefully you found this helpful and, uh, and we'll talk to you later on.